Hello, my name is Chinomso Ibe. I'm a graduate research assistant at the University of Minnesota. This hands-on activity demonstration is on hazard mapping to identify a hazard source. I developed this activity along with Pete Rayner from the University of Minnesota. For this hands-on activity, you will need a smartphone with a downloaded free or inexpensive app to measure sound levels. iPhone users may choose to install the Noisy app by EA Lab and Android users, the SPL Meter app by Killsoft as options to measure sound levels. A free noise generating app should also be installed on the smartphone. iPhone and Android users can download the high frequency noise by Purple Innovation. Alternately, you can retrieve noise sounds such as pink noise from YouTube. Other materials needed for this activity are a portable audio speaker to amplify the noise levels, a measuring tape, a masking tape, four colored markers or pens or pencils with the colors green, yellow, orange, and red, a pen, and a piece of paper to draw on. One purpose of this activity is to know how to use an instrument to detect the source of a hazard. For this demonstration, we focus on noise as a hazard. So let's determine how to use a noise measuring instrument, in this case, the Noisy or the SPL meter apps, to take an average sound level reading. On this Android phone, the SPL meter app has been downloaded. The SPL meter measures sound pressure levels or SPLs every second. Press the pause button at least 10 seconds in to take an average sound reading. The average SPL measurement should be displayed on the screen in units of decibels. Unpause and press the clear button to reset the app so that the next measurement is separate from the one before. To get a sound level reading over a particular point or place, hold the phone at ear height but far away from anything such as your body that might reflect sound into the app microphone and offset the measurement. Another purpose of this activity is to create a noise hazard map. Noise mapping is a visual representation of SPLs that involves taking sound measurements at predetermined positions identified on a floor plan. Use a masking tape to mark 20 to 30 points predetermined with the measuring tape. Draw a diagram to show the basic layout of the room and add in the predetermined measurement points on the room layout diagram. The noise source for this activity can be generated using the high frequency noise app downloaded on the phone. Connect the smartphone with a noise generating app to the audio speaker and place at a predetermined location in the room. Select a numerical frequency level between 500 and 4000 Hz, then start the identified frequency level to generate a monotone sound frequency as the source of the noise. Next, use the SPL meter app to measure sound levels for each marked point in the room and record the measurements on the room layout diagram. Create a color-coded legend of SPLs in decibels using a 4-column by 2-row table as shown here. Color row 2 of column 1 green, row 2 of column 2 yellow, row 2 of column 3 orange, and row 2 of column 4 red. Set SPL1 as the next lower integer sound level smaller than the lowest of the group's sound level readings. Since the lowest sound level reading is 84.1 decibel, then SPL1 is 84 decibel. Set SPL5 as the next higher integer sound level larger than the highest of the group's sound level readings. Since the highest sound level reading is 90.1 decibel, then SPL5 is 91 decibel. Use the following formulas to set SPL2, SPL3, and SPL4. SPL2 equals SPL1 plus 0 0.25 times SPL5 minus SPL1. Since SPL1 is 84 decibels, 
and SPO5 is 91 decibels. SPO2 equals 84 decibels plus 0 0.25 times the difference between 91 and 84 decibels to give a value of 85.75 decibels. SPO3 equals SPO1 plus 0 0.5 times SPO5 minus SPO1. In the same manner, insert SPO1 and SPO5 in this formula. So SPO3 equals 84 decibels plus 0 0.5 times the difference between 91 and 84 decibels, which equates to 87.5. SPO4 equals SPO1 plus 0 0.75 times SPO5 minus SPO1. Insert the numerical values of SPO1 and SPO5. So, SPO4 equals 84 decibels plus 0 0.75 times a difference between 91 and 84 decibels. The answer is 89.25. Now, label row 1 of column 1 with the range SPO1 to SPO2, that is 84 to 85.75 decibels. Label row 1 of column 2 with the range SPO2 to SPO3, that is 85.75 to 87.5 decibels. Label row 1 of column 3 with the range SPO3 to SPO4, that is, 87.5 to 89.25 decibels. Label row 1 of column 4 with the range SPO4 to SPO5, that is, 89.25 to 91 decibels. Color the region surrounding each marked point on the room layout diagram in the range in which the measured sound level lies on the legend. Ensure that each colored region is identified visibly with either a large circle or a large rectangular shape. Each colored shape should be close to each other but should not overlap. Judging from the noise hazard map of the room, sound levels decreased as we moved farther away from the source. However, the highest sound level reading of 90.1 decibels indicates proximity to the noise source or noise hazard. I hope this video demonstration has given you insights on a hazard mapping technique and on how to use instruments to obtain measurements that will determine the spatial distribution of a hazard. Thank you for watching. This lesson has been created by the Midwest Emerging Technologies Public Health and Safety Training Program, also known as MedFAST, which is a collaboration between the University of Minnesota School of Public Health, the University of Iowa College of Public Health, and Dakota County Technical College. The content of this lesson is solely the responsibility of the developers and does not necessarily represent the official views of the National Institutes of Health.